So what ends up happening is they have these people that have grown and they're experiencing growth in some way or another. And they feel frustrated because companies are trying to do things an old way or do things in a way that doesn't align with that balance that everyone needs to have. And then employees get labeled as challenging, toxic, frustrating, you know, whatever it is. And then people can't figure out why they have a dysfunctional culture. Welcome to the C-Suite Mentor, the place where you will learn the tools, strategies, and mindset to scale your business sustainably and build a lasting legacy. I'm your host, Teresa Cantley. As a fellow CEO, I understand what it takes to scale a business to seven and multiple eight figures. It's not necessarily what you might think. It requires a complete shift in how you think, strategize, and execute key actions in your business. My mission is to help CEOs step back into the driver's seat of their business by optimizing their operations, empowering their team, and staying in total alignment with their big vision. So are you ready to exchange everything that hasn't worked for strategies that will? You're in the right place. So let's go. Challenging employees, toxic employees. Are they really challenging and are they really toxic or is there something else there? I have heard this topic a lot over the past several months. I know that there have been challenges hiring finding good people, retaining good people, and really honing in on who it is that you need in specific roles. I know that there have been, businesses have had a lot of challenges with this, particularly local businesses, smaller businesses, really trying to attract that talent that they need to move their business forward faster. But the truth is, is are these employees, once you have them in your organization, and I've had conversations with people where they talk about having toxic employees, talk having challenging employees, and not really sure what to do. And my question is always, are they really challenging? Is there really a problem with their performance? Or is there something that's underlying behind it? And we're going to talk about this today because here's the thing. If you don't get to the root of the issue, this goes along with really anything. If you don't get to the root of the issue, it's just going to keep resurfacing. And I have seen many, many business owners and business leaders who don't necessarily want to get to the root of an issue. They want to blame other things and they want to blame external circumstances, the economy and what's happening. They want to blame, you know, this and that and the other thing. And they don't necessarily want to understand or even have their eyes open to what the real problems are. So I had a conversation with one of my clients the other day and he said, we have had been so frustrated with our staff, because we can't get them to do even the simplest things that they need to do. And, you know, whether it's creating a schedule or looking at lineup notes or, you know, just, just simple stuff, really, really simple stuff, simple processes and procedures that make the business run. And in listening to him, I had two questions for him. I said, number one, Do they really understand why they need to do these things? And then number two, in listening to him, I said, you are, what you're saying to me about these employees, what you're saying, what you're doing is you're defending every reason why they can't do it or every reason why they can't learn it. And what that tells me is that you haven't spent enough time really teaching them and guiding them to understand how the business works and why you do the things that you need to do. And if we took it even further, this particular client, there are a lot of external circumstances happening in the business and things that were are completely out of their control. 
And the reaction that they're getting from other leaders in the business or other people in the business is a lot of stress, overwhelm, and frustration. So if you have employees that aren't doing what they're supposed to do, and they're very challenging, they don't show up for shifts or they don't, you know, do the things that they need to do, either it is a problem with that particular employee and maybe they are indeed toxic, or it's a problem with leadership not fully explaining how the business runs, why do you do things the way that you do them, and then how to do them better. So if we look at, and I, in talking to this client, we'll go back to this again, in talking to him, the particular area of a group of employees that weren't doing or weren't really taking these operating processes and doing them, the person who was in charge of that area was absent a lot, not really implementing the things that they needed to implement. And of course, when you have somebody who is in a leadership position, people see how they're showing up and then they think that it's okay to not do certain things, to not, you know, to slack off or to come in late all the time or to upwardly delegate. So again, I always like to take a look at where's the root of this? There's a behavioral problem, but where's the root? If it truly is that the person is not a right fit and they are a challenge and they're, you know, they're very toxic because toxic employees can absolutely ruin any great strategy and any really strong vision. I like to say, I heard it once and it has stuck with me ever since then, a dysfunctional culture will trump any great strategy and any strong vision any day of the week. So if we don't fix and get to the root issue, then it's just going to continue to permeate throughout your organization. So before we start labeling people as toxic or challenging, let's figure out what's behind all of this, okay? And the thing that we need to look at is the culture, the culture in our business. The culture in our business will start to define how we do things. And when we look at how we do things, we look at the dance and the harmony between the structure that we create which is how the business runs with our standard operating procedures, or as I like to call our standard operating processes, and the people who are actually executing and carrying it forward. The people who are bringing life to the building that the organization's in, or people who are bringing life to the organization itself. So you need to have that dance, that harmony between the two. And we need to figure out how to have balance. But if you don't spend time, and I just want to mention this, that is what is going to help to really create that culture in your business. Is that dance between people understanding how they need to do things and why certain processes are set the way that they are? And then what is their role in it? What is their role in co-creating that vision, that future, those results, the goals that you are looking to achieve. So if we don't spend time on really honing in on how we want things to operate, beyond that, the first piece is, is why do we want to do things the way that we want to do them? What is that bigger vision that we have and that future we're going to create? So once we understand what that is, the next step is, is to then say, how are we going to bring this to life by putting in structure into our business? Understanding how we want to get people from point A to point B in the shortest amount of steps with the greatest amount of impact. And then when we understand that, we can talk to the people about it. We can talk to our team about it. We can talk to our staff about it so they understand their role in making all of this happen. Their role in making sure that the business runs smoother. But people don't want to spend time on defining that. 
everybody wants to, or everybody, you know, they're like, oh yeah, let's define our vision. Let's set our goals for the year. But then people miss, business owners miss the part of really understanding and wanting to understand how the business runs now. And then also how you can do it even better moving forward. Because again, you know, one of the things that human beings want and businesses want, because I'm all about like a business, like we humanize businesses. And one of the main things that people want is growth. A business, a living and breathing thing wants growth. So if we're not doing anything to promote growth, looking at how do we do things and then saying, how can we do them even better? How can we improve things? How can we deepen the connection and the relationships with our customers? How can we deepen the relationship and connection with our team? If we're not looking at those things, then how can we expect the people who work for us and with us to really perform at their highest level, to really step into excellence, to really, really step into their highest and greatest self and really do their job 1000%. How can we expect them to do that if we haven't spent the time to say, this is how my business runs now, but I want to promote growth. I want the business to grow. So how can we do things even better? I had another conversation with someone the other day who was telling me, this is a new client of mine, and we were talking about how he has all these disgruntled employees and how they're frustrated and how, you know, they're like, he's losing people. And he's like, I don't understand. In the next breath, he tells me that the person who runs the operations has been doing things the same way for many, many years and doesn't want to hear what anyone has to say for improvements. And then people can't figure out why they're not profitable. Well, if we go back to, because I like to look at it like profit isn't necessarily about money. Profit is about, in my mind, it's about how can we get people to connect to what needs to happen and make it happen in a better way that leads to more efficiency, more effectiveness, more time to be creative and innovative, and ultimately leads to more money, right? So what we need to do instead is, number one, is to really understand how do we need things done in our business? And aligning with that, who do we need in our business? You know, a lot of businesses are trying to hire the way that they hired three, four years ago. And in today's day and age, like in in this new era of business, in this new era world, we have to promote our business and almost sell to people who we want to attract into our business as much as we would, you know, trying to connect with future customers or current customers and really put out there who we need in a role. What is that person, what kind of human skills that that person have? And how will those human skills, how will that role then align with the things that we wanna do to make our business run more smoothly? Again, it is the dance between structure and the people, the humanizing of it. So when those two get into alignment with each other, one brings the other to life. But in order to do that, again, we need to make sure that we have the right people in the right roles. And we also need to make sure that the way that we're doing things aligns with those people that we need in these roles. Again, something that businesses don't want to take a lot of time to do. And when stuff starts to And I've talked about this before, the whole, you know, going back into the office when people have had hybrid work, hybrid work policies for the past, you know, since 2020, or even work from home policies, you know, they look at it and say, well, we want people back in the office because we think they're going to be more productive. Instead of looking at it and saying, what can leadership do to how can we promote this hybrid work, you know, work life? How can we promote this? 
How can leadership make sure that people are productive and that they are stepping into their highest level of performance because they have more balance in their life? They're able to, three things, they're able to think independently, so they have autonomy. They're able to master skills to a higher level. And the third thing is, is that there's a development piece in there. So if I can back up for a second, a lot of businesses are trying to function like, oh, everybody needs to be in the office or, oh, we did it like this three years ago. So we're going to continue to do it this way. And they don't realize that people have grown. Again, we want growth. Our business as a living and breathing entity wants growth. People want growth. So people have grown. They have evolved. That's just what happens. But businesses don't want to catch up. So what ends up happening is they have these people that have grown and they're experiencing growth in some way or another. And they feel frustrated because companies are trying to do things an old way or do things in a way that doesn't align with that balance that everyone needs to have. And then employees get labeled as challenging, toxic, frustrating, you know, whatever it is. And then people can't figure out why they have a dysfunctional culture. And again, a dysfunctional culture will trump any strong strategy and strong vision absolutely any, any time. So the things that I want you to ask yourself, because there are toxic employees, there are employees that, so we're going to go to the flip side of this. There are people who love drama. There are people who love focusing on discouragement. I think they are people who get up in the morning and just say, I am just going to find something to be miserable about. And I'm just going to be miserable to everybody. And those people do... (laughs) They are in businesses. We have to be able to determine whether or not what's happening is because of a toxic situation or it's because of we're not doing something that we need to do as a leader in our business. So the quickest way, one of the quickest ways to look at your culture and say, We have an alignment problem. We don't have an achievement problem, but we have an alignment problem is to look at all of the people in your business and say, this is what I want to accomplish. Whatever that those things are for 2024 or beyond, these are the things that I want to accomplish. Do I have the right people in the right roles? When you walk into the business, what is the vibe that everyone gives off? Does everyone understand what that bigger vision is that we're trying to create? And the fourth thing is, is that are we like, as a leader, do I promote independent thinking? Do I promote self-development? And do my leaders in the organization, do they promote these things? If the answer is no to all of that, well, then you have a problem. If you look at it and you look at yourself and say, I have not shown up as a strong leader. You know, I'm walking into my business frustrated because revenue is down, profit is down. You know, I can't hire good people. So I'm showing up negative. Well, you can't expect anybody else to show up in a positive way because they're going to feed off of you. So asking yourself, do people understand you know, why we do what we do, but then understand how things operate and why they need to operate in a certain way. Do they understand that? Because if they do and they have that knowledge and they are purposely um, sabotaging things, then they need to go. But if you can get super clear yourself, and even if you have a leadership team or just a second in command, And you can get clear with them on this is what's happening. These are the people that we need. Do these people align? And if they don't, then it is time to set to part ways. But people want to label toxic employees like immediately without really understanding the root issues of what's happening. 
I mean, you will have employees who just, like I said, they feed on drama. They look at drama. They have a lot of negative inputs into their life, you know, whether it be whatever, like things that they watch, things that they read, you know, and they just are people that want to focus on discouragement. They want to focus on, you know, the drama. They want to focus on holding people down, not lifting them up. And if you have those people in your organization, you need to get rid of them right away. Because again, they will cause so much more dysfunction and trying to unravel that um, is harder than, you know, just kind of making that cut. You're trying to fight against it, I should say, is harder than making the cut and then try and then figuring things out along the way as you go. So again, we're going to back up. If you have challenging employees and we don't get to the root of the issue, it will persist and it will continue to resurface and it will get louder and louder and louder. So a couple of things. Number one, we need to understand that we need to have that harmony between what it is, that structure that we have in our business and the people that bring what we do and why we do it and how we do it to life. We need to make sure that we're consistently having harmony between those two. And if you don't, that's where you need to start is to say, okay, we need to redevelop our processes and how we do things. And we need to, or or maybe it's not redeveloping them. Maybe it's just having a deeper education with your team so that they understand it even more. Number two is really understanding who you need in these specific roles. And if you have someone who doesn't quite fit what you need in there for that role, either it's going to be a development thing where you can get them some more training, you know, helping them to advance their skills, or it might just be they just aren't a right fit. And then again, you're going to have to part ways. Really understanding and getting them to, you know, for you to be clear on what it is that you're trying to create. And then from there, making sure that everybody on your team understands the greater vision for the business. But as I said, you know, when we get to the root of the issue, it's either going to go one way, it's going to go the development way that these people just need, we need to um, get them skill mastery. We need to get them a development plan or it's going to go the other way with, we need to part ways. And I have seen organizations where they do have leadership in place who is very negative, who tries to just push everything through and just force results and also has a tendency to speak negatively about things in front of people. And the impact and the trickle-down effect that happens is incredible. You could take someone, a business who has a phenomenal plan and has achieved phenomenal results. And when you have one employee like that, especially in a leadership role, it will completely trickle down the rest of the organization and take it down. So really understanding what exactly is happening and getting good at solving the puzzle and saying, okay, what do we need to do to get these things back into alignment? And then starting to take action to understand who you need in those roles to understand the root issue of what's happening and then to understand the next steps that you need to take to get everything back into alignment. So most people, most businesses, they achieve a lot of things. But when they're stuck and when things are frustrating and when they have dysfunction, it's not an achievement problem, it's an alignment problem. And, you know, trying to put performance reviews in place and scorecards and whatever you want to do isn't going to do anything. It's going to fall flat if you don't start from the inside and understand what's happening so that you can move kind of through the organization and start to get things back into alignment. So I hope that this helped you. Again, I know a lot of businesses are really struggling with hiring and retaining good employees right now. But I will tell you, If you do things differently, if you look at this and stop playing with an old playbook, if you look at this and say, who are we, what do we care about, who do we want on our team? 
and you get super clear on that, you are going to be able to weed out the people who don't fit and find and attract and keep those A players, those people who are high impact, who are have a growth mindset. You're going to be able to attract them into your business, have them be part of the healthy culture that you're creating, and you will be able to be more profitable and achieve everything that you want to achieve this year. But you have to get to the root of the issue first. So until next week, have a great rest of your week and I will see you soon. Hey there, thank you so much for listening. If you found value on the show, please follow the podcast so you never ever miss an episode. And I would love, love, love if you would leave a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify for me. Even better, share the show with a fellow business owner ready to step fully into their CEO leadership role. Because right now, more than ever, the world really needs next level leaders. And by the way, did you know you can text me all your questions and get real-time feedback? You absolutely can. Just text the word CEO to me at 610-215-2838 to get connected. One last goodie for you before I go. If you're ready to scale your business and have a co-creator working right by your side, My C-suite mentor program may be perfect for you and your possible new second-in-command. Just visit thecsuitementor.com to get started.